179 minutes, MA rated. Now, you've got, again, my pronunciation, I apologise, Yusuke Kofuku is a celebrated actor and theatre director, while his wife, Otto, is a screenwriter. And the pair appears to have a close and loving relationship. But in the past, there is tragedy. They lost their four-year-old daughter many years ago. And understandably, the pain still lingers. Now Otto creates fabulous stories, seemingly out of nowhere, which her husband helps her to flash out. When arrangements for a work trip by Yusuku Kafuku go awry, he catches out his wife with another man, a young actor and admirer of Kafuku, named Koshi. And then one day, Otto says she wants to talk to Kafuku, and they agree to do so after he gets home from work. So you've got this woman who loves the husband who's had a relationship with another man and now the husband wants to talk to the wife after work. Unfortunately, though, that conversation is never had because tragedy strikes again. A couple of years later, Kafuku is engaged by a Hiroshima-based theatre festival to direct a Chekhov play, Uncle Vanya. And first up, he has to agree to being driven to and from the audition room, quite some distance away, in his prized red Saab 900 Turbo. Reluctant to accept the proposition because he enjoys driving himself, he is not given a choice, and thereby an association begins with his seemingly taciturn 23-year-old chauffeur named Masaki. Now, after the auditions, the diverse cast members start preparing for their respective roles. Finding it particularly difficult is Koshi, the man who Kafuku discovered with his wife, who's applied and got the role, or one of the roles. He's cast in a role other than the one he applied for, though. And among the others chosen is a beautiful young woman who uses sign language to communicate. Now, I've got to say that it, it, you've, got to, you've got to stick with this movie. Because revelations about all the players I've mentioned and others are forthcoming gradually. A number take place in the company of Kafuku's chauffeur, who frequently places a tape, or not places, but plays a tape of Uncle Vanya that Otto, the wife, recorded as, she's dri as the chauffeur drives Kafuku to and from the rehearsal space. So there you've got the acclaimed theatre director listening to his wife's recording of Uncle Vanya while being chauffeured to and from the audition space. And that recording enables Kafuku to absorb himself in the piece. It really is a complex and enchanting work by co-writer and director Yusuke Hamaguchi. And the real reward, as far as I'm concerned, comes in the last third of this piece. Peter? It is a beautifully observed film. I know it runs for three hours, uh, but I did not notice the time at all. And it's based on a short story that's been considerably expanded. What this film deals with so well, and if we're talking about romantic films to some extent, this one does it so well, is about love, loss, grief, coping and moving forward. And especially using the play Uncle Vanya as a very interesting metaphor for uh, memories of the past, of moving forward and finding some sort of hope in the future. Beautifully observed film, uh, excellent acting, and uh, I just have this slight feeling that it might win the Oscar for Best Film. Well, it's been brilliantly written and executed, no question about that. Significant lashings of Uncle Vanya, as you say, in between the personal dramas. It is a slow burn film, Greg, isn't it? Is it not that you need to stick with to get the most out of? This is one of the ones I haven't seen yet, Alex. It's on my to-do list as well. No, that's absolutely fine. And Dave, what about you? Yeah, I adored this film. I absolutely loved... I'm like Peter. I didn't notice the runtime at all. I became so engrossed in the film when I sat down to watch it that I did not notice the runtime. I love the characters. I love the way that the film plays out at its own pace. I think that's something that... We kind of lack in Hollywood films these days where a studio would have said there's no way this movie is going to last for three hours. Um, it, it just is a beautiful film. It's ironic that it's set in the world of theatre because to me it felt like a theatre piece with the, the long scenes and the beautiful dialogue all the way through the film. 
so for me, this is an absolute cinematic masterpiece. Exactly. Uh, the performance is just spectacular. We, we learn more about each of the central players the longer the film progresses. There, there's an inherent sadness uh, in it as well. And the actors portraying the roles are largely poker-faced. I mean, a couple of the key characters throughout, but that does not make their revelations any less shattering. And I love the characterizations of two of the younger women. Uh, one, one is the actress in Un Uncle Vanya, unable to speak, and the other one as a fellow performer. It, it, to me, there was a sort of determination, I think I'd call it, and authenticity in, in their performances. It, it's, I reckon Drive My Car, Peter's this heartfelt confessional that's all the better for being unlike any film that I've seen previously. It's got layers, it's got depth, the likes of which few pictures can emulate. And I, I, I accept that it's, it's suited really probably ideally to film purists, but it's, as you, you also observe, it's a truly spectacular piece of movie making, isn't it? Absolutely, it's a fantastic film and uh, it is in the tradition of some uh, superb films from Ozu to other uh, Japanese filmmakers who observe the human condition in a very subtle and carefully uh, directed way. So it, it is, is out of 10. 10 out of 10. And for you, Dave? Yeah, 10 out of 10 for me as well. Yeah, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. And I tell you what, collectively, they're the best scores. I think they're probably the best scores we've ever given. So go along and see it, folks. It is one minute shy of three hours, so be prepared for a long sit. But the payoff is there in the last act.